Hallelujah. We do say welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome and praise the Lord and welcome to everyone. Those that are in the sanctuary and those that are online, we say welcome. On the behalf of our pastor, Southern yes. Bishop, yes. Yes. C. Sean Tyson. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us here at Calvary Ministry International for Midweek Manor. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I am Evangelist Monica Armour. And we would like for you to invite someone by hitting the share button. Yes. Remember, they hit that share button. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to read in your hearing. I'm going to read the announcements. It says, we were continuing to pray for all the bereaved families. Yes. Today's New Day Bible class will be replayed on the YouTube channel at 7 o'clock p.m. Thursday, May 18, uh, Sanctuary Prayer from 6 to 7 p.m., followed by the Women's Ecclesiastes uh, plus A1 Brothers meeting at 7 p.m. Friday, May 19, Sister Erica Forner's Born Ribbon Cutting Ceremony for Erica's Touch Massage New Location, Raquel Plaza. 815 Youngstown Warren Road in Niles, unit number 8 and at 10 a.m. Also on Friday, Celebrate Recovery will convene from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Dominion Youth will host a discussion, Let's Talk For Real, For Real, For Parents and Youth. It will be here at, it will be here at Calvary at 7 p.m. Thank you, Lord. Saturday, May 20th at 1 p.m., First Lady Tyson will be guest speaker at New Beginnings Women's uh, Department, Hats and Curls, Women's Tea, that's 2007 South Shelly Avenue. Right. Lady right. Judah Car Carson, Jada Carson, Outreach right. Ministry. Right. Yes. Also, Saturday, the A1 Brothers Plus Dominion right. will host a bike ride at 16 Earl Street, right. Youngstown, right. from 2 to 4 p.m. Yes. in question. Yes. Question, see Minister, uh, Minister Kathy or Minister Nathan Bradley. We're still getting toward the paying off of Faith in Action Death campaign. Yes. Upcoming events, Thursday, May 25th, following sanctuary prayer, there will be an insurance workshop presented, providing details on all types of insurance, health, and life at 7 p.m. Saturday, May 27th, from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Women's Ecclesia will be having their second annual tea party theme, dinner, dinner, dinner and pearls, and would like everyone to attend. If you have a favorite tea cup, feel free to bring it with you. Tickets are $7. See Sister uh, Sheila Bradley. The African American Male Wellness 10th Annual Male Wellness Walk, which will be Saturday, August the 5th, and fill fly, oh, added flyers are in the foyer. Reminder, Seekers Gathering, Conference 2023, September the 21st to September 23rd, under the leadership of First Lady Krista Tyson. Let us govern ourselves to the announcement. Our pastor, Bishop uh, C. Sean Tyson, let's greet him by saying, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Armin. Praise the Lord to everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this. God bless you, Mother Joseph. Let's give God a praise for Mother Joseph. Amen. Her voice in the atmosphere is feeling more song. Yes, Amen. And her continuous prayers 
along with all of the prayers of our mothers and intercessors, I pray that each of you have a blessed and a peaceful and prosperous Mother's Day. Those here in the auditorium, those of you that are watching online, mothers are worthy of every good thing coming their way. Amen. So I pray that you did have a blessed Mother's Day. And Amen. I'm so grateful that you joined us again on this Tuesday afternoon for our Midweek Manna Bible Study. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord for how he blessed us in our service on Sunday and gave us such a profound word from the Lord through our First Lady, Pastor Krista. And as you heard, uh, Minister Arger was sharing with you concerning the upcoming Seekers Gathering mm -hmm. that will be taking place here at Calvary in Youngstown, September the 18th through the 21st. I certainly want to implore you to make preparations now mm -hmm. to come and be with us during the Seekers Gathering, September 18th through the 21st. Many of us were blessed down to the years through the leadership conference, which was hosted by our beloved bishop, known to us as PIP, Pentecost in Perspective. And saints still come to me all over the country. When I go out to minister, to tell me they were at PIP and how it blessed them, how they've been looking forward to coming back to Youngstown. Well, the time has come for us to reconvene God's people here in the city of God once again in the month of September. For some of you, it's been many years since you've been here with us at Calvary, and we are excited about this opportunity to come before the Lord. Uh, I think we would all agree these are praying times. Amen. We need prayer, and we need it like never before. So we're looking forward to this time, and I want you to make your preparations to come and be with us. I can assure you, you will not leave the same way that you came. God is up to something, and I want to be a part of what God is doing in these end times. You heard the announcement concerning this coming Saturday where Pastor Crystal will be with our family and our friends at New Beginnings Outreach Ministries. And I am so impacted. unity of the body of Christ. Right. No one church can cover all the bases right. that need to be covered in kingdom building in our city and in our region. So whenever you hear these things, if you're available and can be a part, either would have a friend, must show him self-friendly. So I certainly want to encourage all of the ladies of Calvary Try to go over Saturday and be a part of that tremendous gathering. Yes. All of our friends in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania, Sunday evening, May the 28th, Pentecost Sunday, we're going to be celebrating with the saints of God at our sister church, the Faith Place in Akron, Ohio, where Bishop Samuel Hampton Junior is the proud pastor. The faith place. Many of you will remember that as First Apostolic Church, formerly pastored by our former presiding bishop, Bishop Francis Smith. 
Bishop Samuel Hampton Jr. is now the pastor there and carrying on the work of the Lord. And Sunday evening, Pentecost Sunday, May the 28th at 6 p.m., I will be there by the help of God ministering in that citywide Pentecost Sunday service. That's about an hour drive from Youngstown. So those of you who are able to join me there, that would be a tremendous blessing. Many know that our pastor, our father of the gospel, Bishop Raymond Robinson, pastor of the African Apostolic Temple in Akron, Ohio, but he was also the pastor of the First Apostolic Church, the church we will be ministering at Sunday night, May 28th. So every time I go there, I feel very much at home. So we'll be looking forward to seeing all of the saints in the Akron area Sunday night, May 28th, at 6 p.m. and as many of us from Calvary that can be there, I'd love for you to come. I was so glad to see Elder Newman on Sunday. Amen. Anytime I see him, it just brings joy to my soul. Men like Elder Newman, Under Shepherd Smith, Under Shepherd Coward, Under Shepherd Brogdon, the late Dr. Kermit Green, Elder Jerome Jones, the late great Elder Gerald Morgan. These men had a tremendous impact upon my life and concept of ministry. So anytime I can be in their presence, in their company, just to see their face and to hear their voices, it's a special treat for me. So I was so glad to have them home on Sunday. Let me talk to you a few minutes today from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. The Lord bless you midday, man of Bible students that are here, that are joining us online, and I pray that you will make yourself an internet evangelist, take a moment and share this Bible study. Hit the like button, comment, you're watching on YouTube this evening at 7 p.m. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we may continue to bring you these messages from the word of the Lord. John chapter 16 and verse number 20. If you have it, can you say amen? God bless each and every one of you everywhere. John 16 verse 20. Won't you read along aloud with me here at the church and at home? All of the saints who are shut in that are in the process of being healed. I want you to know that we're praying for you. Amen. Your absence is missed in the house of God, yes. but out of sight is not out of mind. Right, yeah. You are just as much a part of of this church as both of us who are here every Sunday, right. every Amen. Tuesday, and every Thursday. Right. We have not forgotten about you. Right. I want you to know that you are loved and appreciated. I see you online. And every time I see your name, I stop whatever I'm doing and offer a prayer unto God for your healing and your wholeness. I want you to be encouraged to know that God hears your prayers mm -hmm. and that God is still in the healing business. And even though right now you can't physically be in the building, your prayers are still active among us. Glory. They're covering us. They're lifting us. And I hope that you know that we are reciprocating those prayers back to you. And I'm going to be looking forward to when you can return to the house of God as soon as possible. John 16 and verse number 20. Read with me, please. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned 
We ought to say praise the Lord. Verse 21, read aloud, please. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man. Well, we, the Tysons have a new mad child on the way. We got the report on Sunday. I told them, don't tell me. I, I want to be surprised. And I was watching the Christchurch webcast on Sunday when Pastor uh, James and Lady Desiree and the kids, they all had on blue. And my daughter said, this blue is to let the church know that we're having a baby boy. Glory to God. Due on July the 15th. Thank you. And I'm putting my bid in for Jet 3 right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to expand on the dynamic prophetic message Pastor Tyson delivered on Sunday morning. And I want to talk today about travailing prayer. Travailing prayer. As we move now toward the Seekers Gathering in September, we are now in the intentional and intensive process of preparing ourselves, preparing our atmosphere at home, preparing the atmosphere here at the church, and preparing the atmosphere over the city of God for what God shall do through us, to us, and for us. Intentional, imperative, and intensive process of preparation. I feel an unction from the Holy Spirit that our emphasis must now be upon prayer in every facet and in every form. The Holy Spirit has allowed me to get a glimpse of the greater glory that is coming. It's becoming increasingly more tangible to me. I feel that it is now within reach. It is now within our grasp. We are moving closer and closer to where God wants us to be. I also see in the spirit a breakthrough that is coming for a great harvest of souls. Our young people are going to be at the forefront of this new Youth for Christ movement in Youngstown. It will be very similar to the outpouring of the Spirit that many of you experienced here at Calvary in the early 70s, yes. where many of you as young adults yes. came into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in this church. God is going to visit our young people again. Thank you, Jesus. And he's going to visit those of us a little older who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. This divine three-phase movement. Let me hear the class say visitation. Everyone say impartation. Let the class say habitation. This is how it's going to happen in three moves of the spirit. Visitation, impartation, and habitation. It's going to happen. But it must be precipitated by prayer with a particular emphasis on travailing prayer. There are many examples in scripture of travailing prayer and we're going to look at 
some of them today and Thursday, but in a concise synoptic definition. Travailing prayer could be defined as a visceral, spiritual, emotional, and often vocal manifestation of the grief of the heart of God. Travailing prayer is a visceral, spiritual, emotional, and often vocal manifestation of the grief of the heart of God. I believe that the heart of God is grieved over the backslidden, perverted, racially divided, morally bankrupt condition of the United States. In addition to the spiritual apathy of the church in these last days as characterized by Jesus in the third chapter of the book of Revelation as lukewarm. I believe God is grieved by this. Travailing prayer also has a parallel meaning when applied to prayer in the sense where one cries out to God. Friends, this is why being filled with the Holy Ghost plays such a vital role in effectual praying. I have been making an appeal to those of you in the Christian community here in the Youngstown area to join us on Thursday nights, not because I'm trying to proselyte you, not because I'm interested in you moving your membership to Mount Calvary, but I'm trying to get you to come here one hour on Thursday night where you can be in an atmosphere where you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost just like that. You say, well, Pastor Tyson, I see this uh, talk about speaking with tongues and other tongues and unknown tongues. I see that in my Bible studies, but I have not yet experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. The first thing I want to say to you is that you don't have to be in a church to receive it. That's the first thing. But I will say this, it puts you in a much better position to receive when you are in an atmosphere of expectation. So if you're in an atmosphere of unbelief, if you're in an atmosphere of pessimism, if you believe those who are telling you that you don't need it, that it's not for you, that was just in the days of the apostles that tongues and the gift of tongues and other tongues and unknown tongues is no longer a part of the spiritual protocol of the New Testament church. Well, if you, if you remain in that environment and in that line of thinking, you'll be left with nothing but a form of godliness because you are in alignment with people who are in denial of the power thereof. But I've got some people in this room and watching on that webcast that can let you know the Holy Ghost is just as real as the chair you're sitting in. And it comes with power. Divine, supernatural, energizing, yoke destroy, burden lifting, heart healing, mountain moving authority. The synergistic union of the baptism in the name of Jesus and the infilling of the Holy Ghost 
is a double whammy that the devil can't handle. Can we say praise the Lord? Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse number 26. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 26. You have your Bibles at home, whether it's on your phone, your iPad, or if you're old school like me and Elder Smith and got a paper Bible. That's all right too. Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Being filled with the Holy Spirit plays a vital role in travailing prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Romans 8 and 26. If you have it, say amen. amen. So glad to see those of you that are logging on. I want you to be sure that you take a moment and share the Bible study, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching later. Make sure you take a moment and share this. This lesson is imperative for the body of Christ everywhere. Romans 8, 26, let's read, family. Likewise, the Spirit also help at our in. Whenever you see the word Spirit with the capital letter S, you know it's referring to the Holy Spirit. You see the word Spirit, small s, it's referring to the Spirit of man. Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same thing. Read on. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. I want everyone to tell the student nearest you, God understands prayers that cannot be put into words. I want you to type that in the comment section. God understands prayers. Glory. That cannot be put into words. For all of you who are feeling as though your prayers are not being received. Because they're not as articulate or as extensive as others. Let me take you back to the scripture Pastor Krista had us in on Sunday. Look over in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and pick me up in verse number 9. As we are studying today concerning travailing prayer. 1 Samuel chapter 1 in verse number 9. God understands prayers that cannot be put into words. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9. If you have it, say amen. amen. Thank you, saints. Read aloud with me, please. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. Glory to heaven. God understands tears, the language of tears. Verse number 12, read. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Verse number 13. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken, 14. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Blind priest could not even discern the spiritual nature of this divinely inspired travailing intercessor. You have to be careful now that you do not limit or ascribe the way you pray to a blind priest. That blind priest might be your husband that blind priestess might be your blind wife. 
That blind priest might be your blind pastor, prophet, apostle, or evangelist. But you have to understand, when I am trying to reach the throne, it is going to transcend your religious box. It might not fit into your little religious traditional manner of now I lay me down to sleep prayers. I must invoke the presence of God with an urgency that attracts the anointing's attention. It's travailing prayer. And it comes from the soul. And Hannah answered and said, verse 15, No, my blind pastor, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my somo shetanaya, my soul before the Lord. Thursday night is a pour out my soul situation. Thursday nights are not a time for perfunctory prayers. They're not, a, it's not, a, that hour six to seven is not a time for a, 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 a scripted prayer. It's not a time for uh, let's have a word of prayer before the choir sings. It's not that. It is an hour in which we come to weep between the porch and the altar. And all of this that the adversary has tried to laden us with. All of these cares of this life all of these distractions all of these worries all these children and grandchildren that we're carrying in the spirit all of these health concerns all of these financial concerns all of these emotional concerns to say to God I can't handle this on my own I got to pour it out before God and put it in God's hand and let the spirit do what Dr. Phil cannot do. And let the spirit do what the therapist and the psychologist and the psychiatrist cannot do. The Holy Ghost will heal a broken heart. It will heal a wounded spirit. It will calm a troubled mind. But you got to pour out your spirit. Travailing prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the student nearest you, put a smile on your face. More energy. Put a smile on your face. Not there. More expectation. Put a smile on your face. Because God said, every burden you've been carrying is about to be transformed into a blessing. burden is going to be transformed into a blessing every single one you got to carry it for a while but not always weeping may endure for a night but a morning is coming. God's going to turn those burdens into blessings. I want to show it to you in the scripture. Look there in verse number 17. God opened the blind pastor's eyes for just a moment. And he spoke by impetus of the spirit. In verse 17 read. Then Eli answered I want you to receive this as though God is talking to you. Read. Go in peace. What else? 
and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. Oh, I told you last week, God's going to meet every need. But that's not all. Look at verse number 18. God's going to turn burdens into blessings. Read. And she said, let thine handmaid find grace in the... Here's what I want. So the woman, read, went her way. What else? What else? I want you to give the Lord like the joy of the Lord. Give the Lord a praise like the joy of the Lord is yours. I want this praise to be specific. And right now, this praise is for evangelist Polly Parks. This praise will exchange the garment of heaviness for the garment of praise. Praise here. It's got to lift in the name of the Lord Jesus. That heaven has got to get up off of you. Joy, joy, with joy shall they draw from the waters of salvation and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The spirit of heaviness exchanged for the garment of praise. That's why the devil tries to hinder worship. That's why he tries to hinder hallelujahs. Keep your hands in your lap and in your pocket. Because he knows if you can get hands lifted on earth, that God will lift hands in heaven, open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing. There won't even be room enough to receive. And before he gets to the material blessings, he's going to get to the spiritual blessing, the renewal of your spirit, your soul, and your mind. When I was praying this morning, the Lord said, tell the saints, I know there's a heaviness on you because it was on me. Oh, it was on me so heavy. I said, Lord, you got to give help me the strength to get to the Bible class so I can rebuke the devil and tell him you have no authority to take the peace of the saints of God. You are a liar, and the blood is against every tormenting spirit of anxiety and restlessness and nervousness I rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus the Prince of Peace go back to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 27 Romans 8 and 27 we're going to go from this Bible class in peace. Yes. We might have came in perplexity, but we're leaving in peace. We might have came worried, but we're going to leave trusting in the Lord. Yes. Romans chapter 8, verse number 27. Do you have it? All right, church, let's read. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints the holy spirit uses our hearts he uses our voices he uses our emotions our soul to weep to cry to what the old saints used to call pray through that's what they called it pray through the spirit of God expresses his grief in this manner it's travailing prayer many believers have experienced this not recognizing that it is the work of the Holy Spirit some at their conversion they wept and they cried they 
They grieved over, your, over their sins. My father, when, when we would go to him, Elder Albert Turner, Elder Joseph Jarrett, for confession, Elder Turner used to say, you, 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 you need to grieve over your sin. You ought not be so careless and indifferent about the grace of God. It's something that you always want to be in a state of recognition that I, I, I want to do everything in my power not to grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm concerned now because in many cases we, we, we sin with no remorse. No sense of repentance. No, no sense of I don't want to do this to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory. It's not about getting caught. Thank you, Jesus. It's about my relationship. I don't want this to breach my relationship with God. A burden like Nehemiah had. A burden for Jerusalem. For the rebuilding of the walls. A burden for souls. I can't sleep. After I preach. And no one receives the Holy Ghost. I'll stay up all night. What did I miss here? What didn't I do? That would bring the sense of. Repentance, where, where they could make their way to the water to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I know they're shaking hands all over the country talking about welcome to the church. You're not in the church till you get in that water. Get your sins washed away. Calling on the name of the Lord. That's how your sins are remitted. Through baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. And anyone that told you baptism was just a sacrament has never been baptized in Jesus' name. Because once you go down in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus, you'll recognize it did more than make your body wet. It made your heart clean. We still baptize in water here. In the name of the Lord Jesus. According to the scriptures. Believe on, the, on me as the scriptures hath said. Travailing prayer. When we have a burden for others. For their needs. For their concerns. For their illnesses. For their infirmities. For their ministry. For their future. For their family. For their children. The Holy Spirit cries through us right now I am carrying a God induced burden for children I can't get it off of me listen saints our attention our focus our time our programming our services, our activities, our priorities, our church culture, our finances must be centered around youth because the adversary strategy is for the church to die when we die. Because there will not be enough young people inspired, interested, or invested enough after we're gone to carry the church forward. That's the strategy. Now, as long as we're around here, we know Calvary's going to be here. Because many of us will give our life and have given our lives for the forward progress of the ministry. But that sentiment is not in many of our children. Listen. That love 
For the house of God is not in. You see, Minister Elsina, the devil always plays the long game. He thinks and plans generationally. In that regard, in many instances, the kingdom of darkness, I forgot about you. I'm looking all over the room. I forget about this. I'm talking to you too. In this regard, the kingdom of darkness, in many instances, is wiser than the children of light. The devil is thinking 40 years down the road. I can assure you that. We cannot think, act, and move in this season on impulse. It has to be strategy. Has to be a divine plan. So here at Calvary, one of Satan's most effective chess moves in the last 20 years was to work toward shutting our school down. That was demonic. And it's the reason why from day one, the school was always fought. It's the reason why from day one, it struggled financially. Satan made the wise and calculated decision. I'll let them, Minister Kara, keep the church open. But if I can shut down their school, where Christ is the headmaster. If I can shut down their school, I'll use the secular school system that their next generation will have to be filtered into because the church school is closed. I'll redirect the next generation into the secular school system which I have infiltrated with my principals, my board members, my curriculum directors, my content creators, my teachers, and my agenda to turn the hearts of their children against their parents and their grandparents' God. They'll still come to your house They'll still go on vacation with you. They'll still go to dinner and to the mall with you. But when they say, Look, come on, let's, let us go into the house of the Lord. No, no. I'm here to let this congregation know. If we do not counter attack. If we do not become as deliberate as determined, as strategic, and spiritually violent hey, Jesus. as the adversary is in his quest yes. to claim the souls of our children. Yes. If we don't counterattack in 30 years, oh my God. they'll drive past Idora Park and say, that's where Mount Calvary used to be. We must become immersed in travailing prayer. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. I got to, I'm going to say it in the next board meeting. I'm going to say to the board, a new school is more important than a new sanctuary. We have to build a building that can do both. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It can house worship on Sunday and school on Monday. Yes, See, it's not in the stained glass. Hey, it's not in the stained glass windows. It's not in the wall-to-wall -wall carpet. It's not in the pillars and the posts. It's not in a pipe organ. It's not in all those materials. Material uh, expressions of cathedralism. Yes. It's in a place where the entire culture yes. is conducive to the glory of God. Yes. 
in every area, spirit, mind, and body. Look at James chapter 4 and verse number 8. James 4 and 8. We've got to get serious about this devil trying to kill our kids. I was emphatically alarmed when one of the daughters brought me the textbooks that they're teaching out of in the schools. I didn't know all of this was in textbooks. I didn't know they were bringing drag queens to the school and in student assemblies having those spirits up dancing and worshiping the devil in the presence of those impressionable minds and open spirits. It's number one in my mind. The reopening of our school is number one. And all things Dominion Youth is 1A. I don't take this thing off my wrist. I sleep with it. I shower with it. I preach with it. Dominion is dope. Because every time I look at this, I start praying for our young people. I'm in James chapter 4 and verse number 8. James 4 and 8. James 4 and 8. What does travailing prayer look like? James 4 and 8. Read with me, please. Draw nigh to God. And what will happen? What else must we do? Cleanse your hand, ye sinners. What else? Come on. He's talking to believers in that verse. Because unless you're Jesus, you have sinned since you've been saved. I know you can't say amen to that. I know you can't say amen. Jesus. He's talking to saints in this verse. And purify your heart, ye double-minded. Double-mindedness is sin. Perpetual distraction is sin. Not fulfilling your calling is sin. Prayerlessness is sin. Tide stealing is sin. Running your mouth about something you know nothing about is sin. What are we doing in verse number nine? What does travailing prayer look like? Read. Be afflicted. What else? And what else? I know it's summertime and we used to getting turned up at summertime, but it's time to turn the plate down. I know we say summertime is party time. Not this year. Help us, Lord Jesus. I'm not mad at you because when you live in Youngstown with our bipolar weather, with winters like the North Pole and summers like Africa, you need to get out of town sometime. I understand that. But you also have to have a sense of when God needs me at home now. You have to have a sense. I need to get back to Youngstown for Sunday. Now Bishop Wagner and Bishop Tyson, they didn't leave that to chance. They just said, I'll see you on Sunday. Well, where, 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 where are you going? Afghanistan. All right, let me pray for you. I'll see you on Sunday. They, they didn't, that wasn't even an option. Especially if you operated in ministry. All this hitting and missing got to stop. 
It just has to. Don't think because I haven't said anything to you about it that I don't miss you when you're not here. I do. And here's what you got to understand. The atmosphere misses you. The person that was sitting on your row Sunday that could have been delivered through your worship, they miss you. The one that needed that burden lifted by your smile and handshake, they miss you. They said, I've been running for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been running for Jesus a long time. I'm not, cop your hand. I've been praying for Jesus a long time, but I've been praying for Jesus a long time. I've been walking by faith a long time, but I've been walking by faith a long time. They said, no, I'm not tired. They said, no, 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 no. I've been waiting on a miracle a long time, but I've been waiting on a miracle a long time. I've been looking for a blessing a long time, but I've been looking for a blessing but a long time. Help me say, no, no, no. I said, no, 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 no. Tell your neighbor, now's no time to get tired. Holy Ghost said, close your Bible. Travailing prayer. What we're doing in terms of teaching principle on Tuesday, we're putting into practice on Thursday. So when we come into Thursday, we're coming in crying. We're coming in with rended hearts. With passionate prayer. With intensive intercession. I want to say to all the ministers of Calvary. Shepherd's Hour. Power 10. Is now the first 15. I did not suspend power 10 for the ministers to show up at 10, 15, and 10, 30. I suspended power 10 because you don't need another Bible class before Sunday morning service. Just come to the one on Tuesday, the one on Thursday, and read your Bible. I want to see you run to the altar. I'm talking to ministers now. Let me include deacons and deaconess. I want to see you run to the altar like you used to run to the shepherd's hour. When I would come here to preach as a visiting minister at that shepherd hour, because they didn't want to get locked out. See, Bishop, well, Sister Bowers, Bishop will lock, lock the door. They be running down Oak Hill because I could see out the window. And I, I said, what they running for? Look like they running like a pit bull is chasing them, sprinting. I said, well, why not? I asked Jason, why are they running like that? Oh, man, they're trying to get in here before Bishop locked the door. I want to see you run to the altar that way on Sunday morning before God locked the heaven door. I want to see you run to the altar before the heaven doors close. That's why there's no more shepherd hour. That's why there's no more power tent because the focus now is on prayer. Travailing prayer. So if you can't kneel at the altar, stand at the altar. If you can't stand at the altar, walk the aisle. If you can't walk the aisle, sit in the chair and cry. 
Say, oh, Jesus. Send your anointing today. Send your glory. Send your power. Purge us. Wash us. Sanctify us. Bless the praise team. Sanctify them. Bless the player's own instrument. Sanctify the atmosphere. Release the angels into this sanctuary. Destroy every yoke. Break every addiction. We love you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We want you here. We can't do anything without you. This is your house. This is your church. This is your moment. This is your time. Have your way. Work miracle signs and wonder. Anoint the pastor. Put your word in his mouth. Trouble the waters. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Bring backsliders home. Sin revival. Do that for 15 minutes before every Sunday morning service. And I guarantee you the glory will come every Sunday. I guarantee it. Travailing prayer. Whoa, is me. I'm undone. A man of unclean lips. Travailing prayer. There were seven mothers on Sunday morning. That God wanted to baptize in Jesus' name and fill with the Holy Ghost. I saw them in the spirit. Now, those of you who are seasoned in God and have walked with the Lord for years and know the movement of the spirit in Calvary. You have to teach the young people how to seize moments. And I'm going to give you an example of one. One of those moments, Sunday morning, when the first lady started making those declarations over our children and over our families, and she said, cry in Jesus' name. And the saint said, in Jesus' name. I looked around. I said, am I Mount Calvary? And because I didn't want to interrupt, because I didn't want to impose on the movement of how First Lady was moving, I just, I, 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 I was about to burst. Because I, I felt like that was a moment for the mothers. I felt like it was a moment for the women. And I, I, think, I think under Shepard Smith, he felt the same thing I did. And I was holding on to my seat because I, I, I thought I don't want to take up any space on the altar. I, I was expecting the women of God who know the move of God and the understand moments. I really expected you to come out of those seats and flood the altar. And say, oh, deliver our daughters. Save our back. Oh, God. Our backslidden children. So when God gives us another moment like that, you won't need me. Say, saints, come to the altar. Come on, come on around here. Walk the aisles, cry in the spirit. Because we're a church that is controlled by. We can't miss moments like that. There were seven women that God would have filled with the Holy Ghost at that altar if we had been there first. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. A voice crying in the wilderness, commanding the devil, loose them and let them go. You have that authority as much as you all have been through as many times as the devil tried to take your mind, as many times as he has fought your soul with every demon in hell, and you came out with the victory. 
You don't need the pastor, the under shepherd, or the altar workers. They need to be receiving the Holy Ghost sitting on the rows next to all you that have been to hell and back. You got to have an awareness in the spirit that when you touch their hand, come on, baby. God want to bless you today. They're sitting there, tears running down their eyes. You can see the Holy Ghost convicting them. That's when you step in. And become a mediator, a midwife. A midwife. You want to go down for prayer? Come on, I'll go with you. you. Don't want to go down? Let's pray right here. God is back here just like he is down there. So we're not going to miss any more moments like that, all right? We're going to be sensitive to the move of the Spirit. See, travailing prayer places the needs of others above your own. And it is your pain that gives you the level of compassion that they can understand. Because what comes from the heart reaches the heart. If you need prayer, call me at that number on the screen. Area code 330747. Four, 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 five. God is able to fix it for you. Call that number three, three, zero, seven, four, seven, four, 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 five. Believe God with all of your heart. He is a God that is able. I want you to come and visit with us on Thursday. We'll be here from six to seven p.m. on Thursday, Sunday morning. Spiritual Christian classes for everyone of all ages from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Morning worship, 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. Join the First Lady at 5 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday at Krista Tyson Facebook Live or here at Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church Facebook Live or Christ Church Apostolic Facebook Live. Start your day with God for he who meets God first can deal with anybody else later. Be mindful of the Lord's tithe and offering to the Calvary family. If you were not here on Sunday or be out of town this weekend, continue to place God first in the kingdom 10. First 10% of our income and our increase into the hands of the Lord to bless God's house, our community, and God's people. Honor the Lord with his tithe if you haven't done it this week. And on Tuesdays, we attempt to give the Lord a $20 free will offering. I want everybody in the room and everybody watching that is able to worship God with a $20 free will offering to do that. And if you don't have 20, give the Lord the best offering that you can. And he said, Pastor Tyson, I don't have any money. Give God faith that God will provide all of your needs. And that in due season, you will have not only the spiritual resources, but all of the financial and material resources that you need to be a blessing to God's house, to be a blessing to your house, and to your family. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us on today, and I look forward to seeing you in prayer tomorrow morning. And until then, stay safe, stay calm, and stay. Supernatural. God bless you in Jesus' name.